Pokemon fans, Tamashi here. Last week we began delving into the world of Generation 2 Pokemon glitches. And we covered a few cool things like using the coin case to get Zelby, and even program a custom message into the game. Today we're going to be finishing up our coin case coverage and moving on to other glitches. So if you didn't see last week's video, you're going to want to click here to watch it and get yourself all caught up. If you're all up to speed though, let's go glitch hunting. Because the coin case glitch can be exploited to arbitrarily execute code, this means you can basically get anything you want to happen. Players have essentially figured out how to reverse program the game using this exploit, using it as sort of a built-in game shark. So pretty much anything you can do with the game shark, the coin case can do too. There's information out there on how to accomplish any number of things using the coin case, like infinite rare candies, renaming the player and even the mother, warping to other maps, getting glitchy phone contacts, and so much more, which I'll link in the video description. We'd be here forever if we went in depth with everything the coin case glitch can do though, so instead, we'll go over one last coin case exploit to net ourselves a glitchy Pokemon, which in turn will lead us to some other fun glitches. To do this, we'll once again be stocking our item PC with some very specific items in a very specific order. Remember that the coin case glitch, when used with a cry like Bell Sprouts or Machops, causes the game to access data for the overworld. So by moving in a specific pattern and then listening to these cries and accessing the coin case, we're forcing the game to read the data for your party Pokemon and then jump to the items stored in your PC. This is why we need these items and why we need specific Pokemon in our party. They basically act as a code, plugging in values for the coin case to arbitrarily execute. For this item code, we'll need the following items stored in our PC. These items will be pretty much the exact same ones you needed for Salvi, with just one minor change. So if you track down those items, you should have just about everything you need for this one. In general, the process is pretty much identical, since it's more or less the same item code, so you should be pretty familiar with it already. First, you'll need to have any quantity of any item stored, followed by 38 of any item. Again, I use potions because they're easy to get. Then you need two TM27s, followed by 42 freshwaters, one lovely mail, HM7, and 65 Pokeballs. Here's where the code differs from the one we use for Celebi though. This time, you're going to need to deposit three stacks of 99 Great Balls, so that the Great Ball is listed three times in the PC. Then withdraw 95 from each stack, so that you have three stacks of four Great Balls. Following this, deposit one Everstone, any quantity of any item, 51 Surf Mails, 18 Full Heals, 42 Flower Mails, HM3, 1 X Speed, 1 TM6, any quantity of any item, and 1 TM41. As for party Pokemon, you're once again going to need that Quagsire with Sleep Talk in its first move slot, holding an HP up in the fourth slot of your party. You'll need a freshly caught low level Pokemon in the third slot, and a Pokemon that can fly in your party. If at any point the glitch doesn't end up working right, it could be that you made a mistake in your PC items, but more likely, it's just that your low level Pokemon didn't have quite the right stats to make this work. If you have trouble, keep retrying with different low level Pokemon. For me, a level 4 Caterpie I caught just so happened to have the right stats but others I tried gave me lots of trouble, so don't get discouraged if it doesn't go your way at first. In addition to these Pokemon, you'll also need a Pokemon to turn into the glitch Pokemon in your first slot. Remember that you're turning this Pokemon into a glitch Pokemon by changing its species, so please don't use one that you care about. Once you have all the items set up in your PC in the right order, and you have your party Pokemon all configured, fly to New Bark Town and save in the doorway to Professor Elm's lab. Reset the game, exit the lab, and walk four steps right to the first tree. Hit start to open your menu, and open up the Pokedex and listen to either Bellsprout, Machop, Machoke, or Omanyte's Cry. Now hit B to go back out to the menu, and open up your bag. Scroll through to your key items pouch, and select the coin case. If all was done right up until this point, your coin should display as normal, and there should be no obvious glitchy side effects. Now fly to Goldenrod City, and walk south to the daycare. Deposit the first Pokemon in your party with either of the daycare workers, and don't deposit any other Pokemon. Immediately ask for your Pokemon back, and they'll say your Pokemon grew a level. When you get it back, it will have turned into a glitch Pokemon named question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, with a hex number of FF. One final note on the coin case glitch itself, since this glitch was caused by an error when they were translating gold and silver, coin case glitches can't be performed in other localized versions around the world, nor crystal version, as they realized their mistake and fixed it for later versions. So coin case glitches only work on English language gold and silver games, and possibly only early versions at that. Now, on to our question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, which I'm going to start referring to by its hex number, FF, to keep things simple. This Pokemon in particular has a few interesting and useful side effects. Having an FF in your party will cause all the Pokemon below it to become hidden temporarily, resetting their index numbers to 000. Additionally, FF itself will be considered by the bag to be the cancel option, this unique quirk can be used to withdraw over 6 Pokemon from the PC, and hide Generation 2 Pokemon from being checked by the time capsule, as long as they don't know any Gen 2 only moves. Today we'll be starting off by looking at withdrawing over 6 Pokemon. 
because this glitch in itself can lead to some other glitch Pokemon that we can register in our Pokedex with their own unique glitchy effects. Every glitch in Gen 2 is just a rabbit hole of more glitchiness, folks. Better get used to it. So first of all, stock your PC box with at least five non-valuable Pokemon. And it might be helpful to make sure that you have the unknown Pokedex unlocked first, as well as easy access to Viridian City via Fly. Once you have the FF, catch Pokemon until you have a full party, assuming you didn't have one already. Then place FF in the first slot of your party, and using the Move Pokemon Without Mail option on the PC, withdraw the five you stored, placing them in the first slot of your party each time. You can withdraw more and see what other values you can corrupt, but at a certain point the game will just freeze, so five is a safe amount. At this point, any number of things can happen to your save file and the Pokemon in your party, so make sure you're willing to risk the stability of your game. The Pokemon in your party will most likely corrupt at least a little during this process, and the effects of this can lead to other things that can corrupt your entire save file. Just be aware of this as you move forward. FF itself isn't dangerous, but withdrawing over 6 Pokemon is. Withdrawing over 6 Pokemon corrupts the RAM data located past the expected end of the Pokemon data structure, and specifically will change the Pokemon seen and owned in both your Pokedex and Unknown decks. So if you care about either of these two things, like maybe you've completed either decks and you want to keep it that way, don't perform this glitch. It's possible, provided you've already obtained the unknown decks in-game, and withdrew Pokemon with stats in certain data ranges, to end up with a glitchy unknown in the first slot of your unknown decks. I actually had quite a bit of trouble getting my unknown decks to corrupt at all, but after a while I finally found a combination of Pokemon that resulted in one. The Pokemon that ends up in the 11th slot of your party I think is the important one. For me, the Ekans that I got from the Goldenrod City Casino happened to have stats that resulted in a glitch unknown. Viewing glitch unknown in the unknown decks can have its own interesting effects, but it's possible for these to be actually harmful to your save game, so try these out at your own risk. Though the game often freezes, crashes, or reboots in Game Boy mode after viewing a glitch unknown, the game also tries to save, but only partially. This means that even though the game resets, some values of your save data will be overwritten, which causes more data to corrupt, often including the Mystery Gift data. Indeed, you can pick up any number of Mystery Gift items from the Delivery Man depending on the hex number of your glitch unknown, and lots of other little places can be corrupted as well. You can end up with room decorations you didn't previously have, your mailbox can fill up with glitchy letters, and since Mystery Gift data is involved, you can end up with a glitchy trainer in your trainer house. There are, of course, other ways to get glitchy trainers in the trainer house, but today we're going to focus on the ones that are caused by Glitch Unknown, and save the others for another episode. For every possible hex number that can cause a Glitch Unknown to be registered in your Unknown decks, there's a separate effect at the trainer house. Some Glitch Unknown won't trigger a Glitch Trainer, some will make the game freeze when attempting to battle the trainer, and some will make the game think that you've already challenged the trainer house that day, even if you haven't. But a lot of Glitch Unknown will trigger their own unique Glitch Trainer to appear in the trainer house. In most cases, they'll have at least one Pokemon that knows a glitch move that causes the game to reboot in Game Boy mode, or some Pokemon may be at some insanely high level, so usually you can't defeat them, but they're fun to mess around with. The one mine generated had a level 205 Machoke that only knew Double Slap. It's not all fun in games though. Remember how I mentioned that your mailbox can become corrupted? Well, if you view your mailbox afterwards, it'll be full of glitchy mail. All invalid mail will appear as a corrupted version of flower mail, signed with an unused character string and if withdrawn and given to a Pokemon to hold, the game will transform it into an equivalent item depending on its hex number. So if the hex number is too high, this can crash the game. If the hex number of the mail happens to be the same one as the cancel option, the game will just appear blank when you try to read it. If you end up with too much glitch mail and attempt to scroll through it, this can spill out into other areas of the game and corrupt the overworld data as well, causing the game to reboot in Game Boy mode, or cause a unique graphical glitch, where the map will corrupt and sprites will become corrupted, and the pack and save options will disappear from the menu. There are also reports that wild Pokemon and trainers outside the trainer house can become corrupted as well. Corrupted trainers will either have the party and name of the last person you fought in a Link battle, or if you haven't battled anybody, their first Pokemon will be a Wigglytuff. The screen will display waiting, as if you were actually in a Link battle, and you won't be able to continue the match. Though, seeing as all of my attempts to mess with the mailbox corrupted the map so badly I couldn't leave my bedroom, I have no way to confirm this. Once you've withdrawn over 6 Pokemon, getting the game back to normal can be difficult, since you've essentially corrupted RAM data. So definitely keep in mind that there may be no turning back, and the game saves every time you move Pokemon without mail in your PC. The game may still be playable after you've messed with this glitch, but it may never quite be normal again. That's all we have for today, but join me next time as we use our FF for even more mayhem. Really quick though, I wanted to let you guys know about a site called Opinion Outpost. Advertisers and businesses like to do lots of market research through online surveys, and to encourage people to participate, they offer rewards like cash and Amazon gift cards through sites like Opinion Outpost. It's a really nice way to earn some extra cash without a lot of effort, 
And if you sign up using the special link in the video description, you can earn an extra $2 for completing your first survey. Anyway, if you missed last week's episode, you can click right here to check out the first Gen 2 glitch video. Or, if you want to go back and revisit the Gen 1 glitch guides, you can click right here to check it out. As always, don't forget to click here to subscribe for more Pokemon videos every week. See ya!